Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. I'm uh, Wan Ahmad Najmi bin Wan Muhammad from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and today I'm going to give a short presentation on how to publish in a scientific journal which is something an important subject matter for postgraduates and as well as for uh, research uh, projects. So let, first we have to identify what is an academic publication. It is actually a technical report of a project or just part of a project okay? and where the technical report will focus on true statements to prove that the contents is accurate, reliable and authentic. Okay? It is quite different from industrial reports because for academic publications, okay, we need to really provide proof okay, in, many theme, in many aspects such as scientific statements, mathematical formulations, and many other proofs so that it can be accepted as true and in this uh, it is obligatory okay, for all of you okay, because the world needs this information okay. uh, the rapid and continuous advancement of knowledge is dependent on academic publications not just on technological products that comes out of uh, out of industries but in truth products Okay. Industrial products are reliant on whatever advancement in academics. Okay. And an uh, academic publication is a catalyst for new technologies and comprehensive advancement of civilization. Believe it or not, whatever we have right now in terms of our gadgets, in terms of our modern lifestyle, it, is, it actually was something that came out from academic work years ago. And we have, you have, Okay, the responsibility, the obligation okay, to come up with new knowledge so that this can be our technology, our civilization can be further improved. And so what is the benefit of publication publications in uh, academic in, in the academic publication platform? Okay, so first of all, you can establish your reputation globally in the field of study. Okay, don't you want that? Okay, publish info of opens up new opportunities okay, where your your work will open up doors for other researchers around the world to improve their own work okay. and it will uh, you will gain knowledge okay, continuously because by writing your fundamental or the strength of your knowledge will be continuously expanded okay, faster and wider audience than books Okay. It also strengthens the comprehension of the gain knowledge. Okay. Believe it or not, until you can, you are able, you are able to write about what you have done in a correct manner, in a systematic manner. Then it means that you do not understand your work. Meaning, when you have successfully managed to publish and a good, a quality scientific publication, then it shows that you have the strength in understanding your own work. Okay, so what I'm going to cover today, uh, these are the nine items, the coverage within these uh, slides, publication, platforms and planning, and then uh, I will go very brief on the, the, the submission process, the structure, the structure, planning of the structure, and then writing the introduction, the methodology, uh, some, some aspects on the model, on modeling works, how to present it, and then uh, the look the outlook of results that you should present, the stylings and the references, as well as some important notes on writing. So basically, my this all of this content that you will be seeing in this slides are all based on my own work throughout the years. I will call it my must have, but don't worry, it is Sharia compliant as I have successfully applied this formula, all these formulas. Okay, to write my own scientific journals over the years. And this is me. So in case that you are wondering whether I am good enough for, to teach you about writing publications, so you can check my CV here and uh, there's my contact number as well as my email. Okay, basically I have been working in UITM since 2002 in the field of energy, for focusing more on hydrogen energy, nanofluids and currently bio uh, sorry waste heat recovery 
and these are my publications okay so if you look at the black circles there's uh, several categories of uh, publications that i have uh, separated yeah okay, currently i published 16 okay 16 publications in journals which is indexed by wos which means world of science so this is different from journals indexed by scopus so we have, I will explain it uh, about uh, what are the, dif the difference between these uh, indexing bodies. And then um, you can also see that I have circle uh, the IF. Okay, IF, uh, that's 4.0 something. And then uh, the Q1 there on the first uh, paper there. Um, so what does IF 4.084 Q1 means? So this is... <coughs> This is something that we call impact factor and Q1 means quartile 1. It is uh, something that related to the category or the ranking of the journal. Okay, this is also something that I will cover later on. And so I've also separated my publications based on journals which are non-indexed by Web of Science and non-indexed also by Scopus. Then there are also conference papers that, is, that are non-indexed. Okay, usually these conference papers are uh, uh, 10 to 15 years, uh, 10 to 20 years ago, because at that time conferences do not index their publication, their their proceedings. And this are uh, at number eight, uh, sorry, at number nine there, you can see the highlighted blue paper. So that is actually my first paper, okay, titled. Uh, published in the Journal of Mechanical UTM, UTM Skudai. So actually that was my first paper published in 2002. That was my first step in academic writing. So it is something special to me. Okay. Inshallah one day you will also be looking back at your own work and you can, okay, based on your experience, you can also identify that which is your which is your paper that has the most influence on you. Okay, so this is my list of uh, publications. So hopefully you are confident enough in me to uh, stay with me until the end of the course. <coughs> Alright, so the first subject matter that I'm going to explain is about publication platforms and planning of publications. So we must first understand what are the databases, the category of databases. And then we can start right at the bottom there. There are tertiary databases and the secondary and the primary database. So tertiary databases are usually uh, Google Scholars, IEEE Explore, Index, Copernicus, and so forth. So these are these databases will index selected journals and proceedings. Okay, whereas uh, the secondary databases, uh, we can, uh, which is normally consists of Scopus and ERA. So this databases also indexes selected journals and proceedings. So what's the main difference between these two databases and the primary database, which is the Web of Science, published by Thomson Reuters and Clarivate Analytics. So this Web of Science is actually the highest indexing body that we currently have in the world. It indexes selected journals and proceedings and provides ranking, impact factor, and other scores. Okay, meaning that Web of Science uh, the journals selected or indexed by Web of Science has ranking. They are of high quality compared to the journals uh, being listed in other databases. As an information, Scopus is the largest database in the world okay, for uh, journals and papers. Even conference papers are indexed in Scopus. Uh, however, not all of the papers within Scopus or journals within Scopus are selected to be indexed by the Web of Science. Okay? Because Web of Science are very uh, critical in terms of selecting the journals and papers that they want to index. Okay? They, they go through a lot of uh, phases of, of, of uh, phases of where they are the papers and journals are scrutinized for its quality. So meaning that uh, whatever papers or journals indexed by Web of Science, they can then be identified as quality papers or we call it high impact journals. So I will explain later on how uh, how to categorize the high impact journals compared from uh, other journals. 
So for your work, okay, for your study or postgraduate study, uh, you can target. Okay, you can target to at least uh, publish one paper in Web of Science journals, in or we can say it as in high impact journals, and you can also target to publish two or three papers in Scopus Index journals, Scopus or Era. Okay, for science and technology, the main uh, the main database will be Scopus because we are not indexed in uh, the science and science and technology papers are not indexed in Era. Okay, so we just focus on. Scopus. So basically, these are the, this is the minimal target for UITM right now. Meaning you have to publish in Scopus Index publications. Okay. So, however, if you can publish in Web of Science journals, it will be a good or a great bonus for you and your project team. Okay, because this is something that is uh, not easily achievable. Okay. So there's also another primary database that you can check. Uh, it is called Simago Journal Ranking. Okay. Just type Simago in Google. So Simago differs from Web of Science because they index all journals in the world. Okay. Nearly all journals in the world are, are, rank, are ranked by Simago. However, the Simago ranking is not as is not as uh, powerful as the Web of Science ranking. So normally, when we call or when we term as Q1, Q2 journals, we refer the ranking based on the Web of Science ranking rather than the Simago journal ranking. However, we can use the Simago journal ranking to have an overview of uh, how does a particular journal uh, stands in terms of ranking. So there's another primary database called Omics. However, for science technology, we don't use that. Okay, so we just uh, focus on the web of science as our primary database. Okay, so in terms of planning, okay, this is a this is a suggestion from me. Okay, in terms of planning, okay, you can plan your papers, your publication from your work based on conferences, Scopus Index, and then go up further to journals, also Scopus Index, and then you can also plan for journals indexed by Web of Science. So for so for PhD and master's degree. I suggest that for PhD, you go for 6 to 10 Scopus Index, whereas for Master's Degree, 2 to 4 Scopus Index. Where uh, This is a general plan that I suggest to you. Okay, you can discuss this with your supervisors, whether it is uh, compatible with your study. Okay, so for conference, okay, uh, I will take for example the, for PhD, PhD study. Um, for conference, you can write conference papers in a, a conference that are Scopus Index during your second to fifth semester, okay, covering your preliminary work or brief review. And you can also publish another conference paper okay, towards waiting for your VIVA, where you produce major results in that paper. And for journal uh, Scopus Index, okay, you can uh, publish during the third to fifth semester, uh, consisting of stand alone results. Okay, meaning you can take a one chapter or one aspect of your work and present it tediously okay, into this paper and try to publish it in this uh, in any Scopus Index journals. Whereas if you want to target for Web of Science Index journals or high impact journal, okay, you have to you can do this uh, during the third to fifth semester covering standalone results or you can wait at the end of your study towards the end of your study maybe during the sixth to eighth semester okay, uh, where you produce major results in your paper uh, you can also write upon graduation meaning you extend a little bit or you, you extend your, a little bit your work or you write about unpublished results in your thesis so this uh, this is a, a plan that I suggest to you because this is uh, what my students okay, my students have successfully applied at PhD as well as master's level. So normally I expect that PhD PhD students would be able to at least publish one Web of Science Index journals, whereas for master's degree it is uh, not compulsory. It is good enough if you can publish one or two journals in Scopus Index. However, 
yeah, for your information, my master student, even my final year degree students are able okay, to publish their work in Web of Science Index journals. So inshallah, okay, if you plan your work carefully, you can uh, successfully publish in Web of Science journals because it is a, another level of publication compared to Scopus Index journals. You should aim, okay, your work should aim for to write or for publication in Web of Science Index journals. All right, let's move on. This is uh, that was about the plan. So now I'm going to explain a little bit about what is Scopus database. Okay, journals listed in Scopus database has been examined, having reached the minimal quality control procedures where uh, a new journal needs to fulfill the requirements and submit application to be indexed by Scopus. So Scopus is actually a database run by Elsevier Publishing Company and it covers a wide range of journals as well as conference proceedings as well as books. So its database is quite comprehensive. And in UITM, as far as I know, uh, there are 47 journals uh, published within UITM. However, there is only one indexed by Scopus. This is the Journal of Mechanical Engineering. So this is uh, something that you can uh, refer to if you want to publish in, in journals within your ITM. Okay, and what the, what is the difference with the high impact factor journals? Okay, so this is this high impact factor journals. It is the highest level of application for scientific or academic work. So high impact factor journals are defined as journals listed as quartal one and quartal two for specific disciplines, and it is uh, the rankings are based on the scores given by Web of Science. Uh, the scores have been uh, uh, been computed by Clarivate Analytics. So what does quartal one and quartal two means? Okay, I will explain later on. Okay, journals listed in Web of Science database are acknowledged to practice strict quality control procedures. It is very strict. It is just not strict okay, compared to publication in Scopus. The level of quality control for Web of Science databases are very very stringent. Okay, you can be easily rejected compared to publications in Scopus or conferences. Uh, basically, if you are submit a paper to conferences, 99% it will be accepted okay, because they are only interested in your money. Uh, and journals for in Scop uh, Scop at Scopus level, okay, they do not appoint reviewers uh, at the highest standard. So, meaning your, your papers can also be easily accepted with a minor corrections. However, for high impact factor journals, the reviewers are selected from a large pool of experts from around the world. So that's the main challenge because they are experts in the field and to get past them is not easy because reviewers like me, okay, I am also a selected reviewer for high impact factor journals. Okay, we have gone through the process of submission and uh, rejection for high impact factor journals so we know that qu the quality that needs to be there in the papers to be accepted so that's why uh, but however this is, is some kind of actually a quality control check okay, a quality control procedure where if the reviewers are not strict then the quality of academic work around the world will go will deteriorate will go down, the quality will go down over the years. So by having strict review process, we are ensuring, okay, we are ensuring that the academic quality level is kept okay, to a minimal standard. So how to identify um, um, whether the journal that you want to publish has a good, has a good reputation or as categorized as a high impact factor journal. So usually we could we will refer to these two scores, site score and impact factor. Right, so for this journal, for example, international international communications in heat and mass transfer. Okay, this is a, if you go to the website, then you will see the scores. Okay, they will publish the scores. Uh, site score for them is 4.55, impact factor is 4.463. 
So how does it being calculated? Okay, side score and impact factor is quite the same calculation. It, it actually measures the average citation received per document published in this title. Okay, based on citation counts in a given year, for example, 2015, two documents published in three previous calendar years. Okay, divided by the number of documents in these three previous years. So the, the main difference between size score and impact factor is that size score takes into account three previous calendar years, whereas impact factor only takes into account two preceding years. Okay, so we'll, uh, we will look an example on how it is being calculated. Okay, so this is another definition for impact factor. Okay. That, okay, so how does ranking and impact factor relate? The ranking uh, of a journal and its impact factor. Okay, so actually ranking is based on subject category. For example, international communications in heat and mass transfer journal uh, is being categorized by uh, by way of science in under the subject matters of mechanics and thermodynamics. Meaning this journal focuses on these two disciplines. Okay, so when the impact factor has been calculated, for example, for the year 2017, the impact factor for this journal is 4.463. So, it is being compared with all the impact factor across the mechanics and thermodynamics discipline. For example, in the mechanics discipline, the journals indexed by way of science, the total number of journals indexed by way of science, in the discipline of mechanics is 134. So by at 4.463 impact factor, this journal, okay, this journal is ranked at number six over 134. Whereas for thermodynamics, there's only 59 journals being indexed by way of science, and with a score of impact factor 4.463, it is also ranked number six, okay, six over. 59. Okay, so now how do we identify whether this uh, journal is uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, or Q4 journal from the Web of Science ranking? So actually, we just divide okay, the score for mechanics. The score is the ranking is 6 over 134, which means it is about 3%. Okay, 3%, uh, the high, high ranking of 3%. So a quartile means 25%. So there are four quartiles, Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4. So if it is less than 25%, the first 25%, it is ranked as a Q1 journal. Okay, if the ranking is within the range of 26 to 50%, so it is ranked as a Q2 journal, okay, and so forth. So meaning for this journal, internet communication in heat and mass transfer, it is, for mechanics, it is in Q1 for thermodynamics 6 over 59 so it is about 10% okay. they are ranked uh, in the top 10% so meaning for even for thermodynamics they are also ranked as a Q1 journal so, so for both disciplines in mechanics and thermodynamics this journal is ranked as a Q1 journal okay so um, I will skip this one this is my uh, Google Scholar account, so you can check uh, about H index and I10 index. Okay, you can read this through; it's quite easy to understand. I will skip through and show you how to check, okay, how to check uh, the ranking of journals in, within the Web of Science. You can go to the Web Web of Science uh, web page through the library, the Opita library. So just click on online database, and then. Uh, Click uh, W and it will show Web of Science. So click on that page. Click Browse by Journal. And then you can uh, just type a journal title. Uh, for example, here, yeah, the journal title is Fuel. So here you can see the complete ranking of the journal Fuel. Okay, it has an impact factor of 4.908 in 2017. So in the category or the discipline of energy and fuel, it is ranked at Q1 because it is number 19 from 97 journals and also for engineering uh, so sorry for chemical engineering field it is also categorized or ranked as Q1 because the ranking 
For this few journal is 13 out of 137 journals uh, in this discipline. So this is how you can check uh, whether the journals that you want to send to is ranked within Q1, Q2, Q3 or Q4 by Web of Science. Um, as a note, only Web of Science and Simago offers this Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4 ranking. Scopus only has impact factor, but it doesn't have uh, the journal rankings in terms of a, a quota. Okay, so if you want to check the, whether it is high impact, uh, you can check with uh, within the Web of Science database. So in definition, Web of Science, uh, sorry, uh, the high impact journals are categorized as, defined as Q1 and Q2 journals indexed by Web of Science only. Okay, Q1 and Q2 only. Q3 and Q4 are not considered or defined as high impact journals. Okay, so, so some journals they have mixed ranking. For example, International Journal of Hydrogen Energy. They are listed in three, okay, under three categories or disciplines. So two, for two categories, they are in Q2 and another category in Q1. So how do we spell out or how do we rank this journal? Uh, as a rule of thumb, okay, rule of thumb, we take the highest ranking. Okay, we can we can define this journal as a, as a Q1 journal, even though they have it has two Q2 rankings and only one Q1 ranking. However, when we say uh, when we talk about this journal, we can say that it is a Q1 journal because one of the category is a Q1. Okay, actually, it is quite challenging to do rank as Q1, so we go for the higher ranking. And you can also check uh, the journals by rank within the, uh, the Web of Science database. You can compare their uh, journal impact factor as well as their quartiles. Okay. So that's enough about databases. Now about the publication itself. Okay. What I'm going to talk about is uh, based on my experience in writing Q1 and Q2 publication or high impact journal publication. Because if you can understand how to write for a high impact journal for publication, then inshallah you will be able to write for lower levels of publication for Scopus Index as well as for your own thesis. So meaning that uh, my slides here uh, can prepare you even for writing your own thesis. Okay, first of all, we have to set the proper mindset in order to publish in Q1 publication. It, it, first of all, you must remember that your writing must be systematic in every aspect. You must have no compromise in terms of quality and enable to write a very good publication. The style of writing is that you have to write to yourself. Meaning if you write something that you can't even understand yourself, then it won't go far in terms of uh, Q1 publication. And of course, never confuse luck with skill. You need all the skill you have in order to publish in a Q1 publication. Never expect luck to play a part. Okay, so the number Q1 challenge is that uh, Q1 highly emphasizes on novelty and significance in knowledge contribution. So you must be able to produce a good research topic. Okay, and a good research topic okay, usually related to a good literature review. A good literature review is dependent on how much critical reading, okay, not just reading, but critical reading and critical exploration, and how far you understand what you have read, what you have explored, is strongly dependent on a firm understanding, meaning you have a very good foundation of science and mathematics to understand what you have read. If you have read a lot of papers, but you do not comprehend it correctly that it might lead to a bad research topic that you will not be able to produce okay, for Q1 publication. So the main challenge here for writing Q1 papers is to find a very novel and a very significant research topic. That's the first challenge. Second challenge is that the Q1 publications require very detailed, 
academic and systematic reporting of the work. So you have to be very, very meticulous, very, very critical okay, about how you report your own work. Okay, do not expect the publication uh, style of writing for Q1 to be at the same level as a, just a general technical report. Okay, because it is not. A Q1 is a combination between academic and technical report. It has to be very detailed and very systematic. And the number three Q1 challenge, Q1 is uh, Q1 papers or Q1 journals are very critical on presentation quality. Of course, it is about English, it is about structure, it is about having professional and high quality outlook of tables, graphs, and figures, and everything should be in order with no obvious mistakes. So I follow the rules follow the standards or follow the styling of uh, good Q1 publications uh, when you write your own paper. Okay, so you have to understand that presentation quality is very critical. So how do you plan for a high impact journal publication? Okay, so you can use the uh, fishbone diagram to help you map your research in detail so that you can uh, identify what part, okay, which portion of your work of your research project that you can uh, convert okay, you can convert or focus into writing q1 papers so in terms of the fishbone diagram okay, you can see an example here of a project okay, so everything is related from problem statement objective scope methodology the outputs so all the outputs okay, as a rule your project all the outputs or the result of your project should be linked to an objective and the objective should be linked to a valid problem statement okay so when everything is in order okay, so you can plan okay, you can plan your journal publication okay based on the objectives of your research for example here okay so you have three objectives from the research work so for objective one and two okay, it is suggested that you plan to uh, publish in a primary publication meaning you combine the results in chapter one and two to publish in a q1 paper for this for an example this primary publication is computers and fleet which is ranked as a q2 journal in web of science and then the third objective because it is the final objective there's a lot of uh, comprehensive or critical results so you can uh, publish it as a standalone publication in another q1 or high impact journal publication whereas for secondary publications you can take some part of objectives one two and three to publish in uh, journals listed in scopus as well as conferences okay, so this is how you plan normally based on the objectives of your work okay for as a note okay, my phd student okay they normally can publish around six to ten publications during their studies okay one of my students she managed to publish about ten publications three of them in q1 publication so this is a very good achievement by her and i'm very proud of her uh, me myself i have only published i only published one q1 publication from my phd but the total publication from my PhD is about 15 papers. So why did I, I go for more uh, primary publication? Because during my PhD study, this uh, high impact journal publication was not emphasized by UITM. Okay. However, in your current batch, because your current generation, this is very much uh, a priority okay, by the university, even though it is not uh, 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 an obligation or, or something that you must do to graduate. However, you should push yourself. Okay, push yourself to publish in high impact journals publication. Okay, so to, to plan for a high impact journal publication, okay, uh, you can uh, make a simple exercise, sketch a simple fishbone diagram of your research project, you can identify your possible scopus and high impact journal publication from your objectives or even from your scope of work. And then, okay, 
How about uh, when you have a uh, when you have planned your publications, you snap a, a picture of that plan and then send it to your supervisors and ask them, is this planning okay? Then inshallah you will get positive feedbacks from your supervisors because you are planning your work based on publications. Okay. Right. What are the most attractive kind of papers for high impact journals? Okay, number one, uh, usually it is uh, experimental plus modeling based papers, meaning you combine both. There are experiments as well as there are numerical or analytical modeling. Okay, so based on this graph, an example from the result of this uh, three graphs, both uh, all the three graphs contain results from experimental uh, versus results from uh, modeling modeling work. So this is actually the most attractive kind of papers for high impact journals. Okay, the models can be from your own work or established or validated models developed by, by others. You have a choice in that aspect. And the most uh, the second kind of attractive paper is uh, fundamental characterization, okay, meaning that you are exploring a new substance, a new material. So you characterize the material in terms of its properties, um, and then uh, this is the you you publish it in high impact journals. So this is the kind of papers that is highly sought after in the world because there's a lot of people in the world that waiting for data about new materials to be used in their own work as a choice, as a platform for them to develop a higher standard of scientific research. So for as, a, as an example, my own student, she published a, a characterization of an alumina nanofluid and she published it as a first, as a first high impact journal publication, a simple characterization paper. And after three years, and now it's already four years, uh, the citation for her paper is nearly 100 okay, after four years of publication meaning it has a it, it is has great response from the from a global public global audience meaning that the world was actually waiting okay, for someone to publish or to come up with this characterization okay, they needed the data so this is something that very attractive for publication and then um, the challenge of writing Q1 papers okay, the range of rejection rate for high impact journals is 70% to 80% this is a very very challenging aspect in terms of submission okay, to a high impact journal expect your work to be rejected but how is it, why, why is it so difficult to publish in Q1 and Q2 journals? What's the problem actually? Is it because the editors are so evil or the reviewers so despicable? So actually, okay, the common reasons for rejection is that uh, at editorial level, the editors will see that the topic is not relevant to their journal, the topic is out of date, bad first impression, especially on language and content of abstract, Okay, as well as uh, the editors may reject because of impression from the reviewer comments deemed unfavorable. So at the review level, okay, this is at my level because I'm also a reviewer for a high impact for a number of high impact general publications. Uh, we actually usually reject a paper when it fails to establish a strong scientific background. The problem and solution are too localized, too shallow. It, is, it has arguable methodology and analytical approach. The results are not scientifically justified or discussed in depth. There are too many witnesses, too many loopholes, and the quality of presentation is low in terms of language, figures, and structure. However, if you send this kind of papers, to scopus or to conference level uh, index paper, index journal or index conferences. Okay, even though you do not fulfill a, a strong scientific background or your methodology is arguable or your scientific justifications are quite weak, 
uh, your presentation quality, your figures, your language is not that good. However, you may find that your papers are, can still be accepted at Scopus level, uh, journals and, and conferences. But do not expect that okay, for high impact journal publication. Everything must be in order. Okay, so these are the specifications where editors expect from reviewers. They check, uh, they, they expect us to give special attention to originality, okay? to completeness of the reported work, justification of the objectives, error analysis of the study, and comparison to the results by others. Basically, there's this all of these items are checked by reviewers. Um, for myself, I usually focus on these uh, five highlighted items. So make sure when you write for high impact journals or for your thesis that you cover all of this uh, tediously or in depth. Okay. An example of review comments. Okay, this is a comment for my journal that uh, for, for a manuscript uh, from my students work that I submitted to the energy and conversion journal way back in 2000. 16 i think yeah, 2016 so even though the uh, there, there's three reviewers okay so for review number one okay, even though uh the, he said that the study reported valuable results still okay, the editor says that it is not uh, the, the overall the review the review is not favorable therefore the paper cannot be published in energy conversion and management so if i take a look at all the comments of the reviewers it falls under the category of presentation quality okay, a lot a lot in that aspect some in methodology some in terms of significant of results okay, for reviews number two okay also about presentation quality uh, the details in terms of methodology uh, the approach taken in analysis Okay, and then uh, for review number three, also uh, same same comments based on quality, methodology, and analysis approach. So even though uh, all three reviewers actually mentioned that there is novelty, there is knowledge contribution. However, due to the number of comments from all three reviewers, the editor has the view that my manuscript has a low quality in terms of presentation so therefore the editor decided that the paper is rejected okay, because there were too many comments on the abstract and introduction parts so that's the most important uh, thing actually in the publication you have to write a very uh, impressive abstract and introduction it is not about the results actually it is about the initial part of your paper. So my paper was rejected by this editor, Mark Rosen, PhD. Yes, okay. So he's, he's like somebody that I hated, but now I'm working closely with him actually. Okay, so do not do not take this uh, personally, okay, because you, you must accept failure, okay, but you you must not accept yourself not trying. Okay, this is something that Michael Jordan and myself says. Actually, for the uh, for the review that you have seen just now, that was actually my seventh rejection uh, during my career for publication in high impact journals. Okay, all that, that was my seventh rejection, but none okay, none of my papers failed to be published. Okay, meaning, I will take into account their comments, improve the paper, and resubmit to another journal so by doing this i improve the quality of my publication work based on the comments of the reviewers so this is something that you need to do do not take rejection as a complete failure okay so improve yourself by uh, looking understanding at their comments okay. then the submission process for individual journals are uh, quite different However, for pub journals published by Elsevier publish Publication Company, uh, it is quite the same. So, with, I think for example here, the journal for energy, 
Okay, you can go into the website uh, under Elsevier Publications. So first of all, you submit your paper. Uh, there's, uh, there's a, there's a step to, there's a couple of steps to follow in terms of submission. So you just click on submit, submit your paper, okay, and then uh, submit new manuscript. Okay. So first of all, you have to select your article type, whether it is a full-length article or based on. Uh, special issues for conferences. So, for, normally our work is based on full-length article, and then you will be uh, required to enter your title, okay, and then the authors, and then the abstract. Okay, just copy and paste into the into the, uh, what, the, the submission process, and then you have to. Uh, carefully select your submission classification because this will highly influence the editor and reviewer selection. So if you choose a wrong classification about of your about your paper, okay, then um, maybe the editor chosen or the reviewer so chosen will not be able to completely comprehend your work. So make sure you select the class your paper classification correctly. And then uh, you can, you must also, it is also comp compulsory for you to suggest reviewers. Okay, to suggest reviewers. Uh, usually you have to suggest a minimum of three potential reviewers. So this, this is usually something that needs to be suggested by your uh, supervisors. And then finally, the final process is about attaching files, the correct files. Uh, the cover letters and the manuscript is usually compulsory. So this is uh, an example. Okay, this is how you find a correct okay, a correct journal for you to submit. You can do this by okay, if you want to submit to a journal in Elsevier. So you can go to the Elsevier website and use this uh, facility within the Elsevier data database. Okay, you find a journal. You want to find a journal, put in the title and the paper extract, okay. and then you click on the proper field of research for for your work, and then find click on the find journal at the bottom. And Elsevier will give you suggestions on the proper journals that you can submit to based on the title and based on your abstract, where these suggested journals comes with their own scores. Okay, if you look at the Journals suggested by a surveyor. Okay. For example, applied energy. Take a look at the acceptance rate. Okay. The acceptance rate is only 14%. Energy conversion and management, only 16%. So this was the journal that rejected me just now. Right? 14, 16, 27, 27. So they have a very low rate of acceptance. Meaning from 100 papers submitted to applied energy, only 14 is accepted for publication. Okay, this is a very, very challenging task to be accepted for publication in high impact journals. So make sure if you plan to uh, plan to publish in high impact journals, Q1 and Q2, Index by Web of Science, make sure all your work is of high quality. Okay, so in terms of a submission, uh, this is the review process. Usually, you can be rejected uh, under three circumstances or under three levels. The editor themselves can reject you, or the first review process can reject you, or the second review process can reject you, or even the third review process can reject you. So, there's a four level of rejection. Sorry, not three, eh? Four level of rejection uh, before your papers can be accepted. So, please, again... Okay? Make sure your quality, the paper quality, the quality of your work is good. Okay. Uh, this is an example of highlights that you need to prepare. So usually you need to prepare about four or five highlights where the maximum uh, words is about 80 for each highlight. And make sure you cover the important aspects of your work okay, within the highlights. And these are... Uh, an example on how to write a cover letter to the editor. This is compulsory. So you can follow the uh, format here. Uh, usually it is it consists of the first paragraph is the title. The second paragraph is based on the general information. 
the third paragraph about specific details and significance of your work and the fourth paragraph is declaration of originality and compliance okay okay so the revision process is also quite tedious actually you have to if your manuscript is actually deemed worthy for publication then the authors will have to address the comments of the reviewers resubmit the revised version and wait for another round of review so you have to need to prepare a separate document that contains your revision of rebuttal to each individual reviewer comments and you need to do this very very nicely okay for example here i attach here uh, an example about how to respond to reviewers comment so take a look how this uh, how my student um, responded okay, to the to each individual comments and so i will not go through this in detail so please read through about the, the revision uh, example okay okay now so for the next part in the uh, presentation is about writing the article itself okay the first part right now uh, just now was about the concepts of writing a, an article to be submitted for a high impact journal publication so now it is about the technical aspect on writing a high impact journal publication there's about 60 slides on this aspect with limited time about 10 minutes uh, i will not be able to explain everything so please read through whatever the technical aspect content within the uh, within the presentation i believe that you can understand it on your own so we we'll go very fast on this okay so first of all you must have the correct structure in brief it follows exactly the same as a tc structure with title abstract introduction methodology result discussion conclusion acknowledgement and reference Okay. Uh, so a little bit about the title so how do you write a good title it must precisely cover the content of the manuscript nothing less nothing more so usually the rule of writing a title is about having these three elements there must be a subject matter there must be a method and there must be an outcome or a problem make sure these three elements are there in the title okay or uh, these three elements usually cover the aspects of what how and and then about the abstract you must also write the abstract comprehensively covering the work okay uh, the first part usually is about the introduction and then the solution that you propose the method the specific method that you apply the results as well as the conclusion so a bad abstract will usually lead to a direct rejection okay outright rejection if the abstract is not done right so be careful about writing your abstracts. This is also true for your thesis. And then um, number four here is about writing an in-depth introduction. Okay. For an introduction, please, the key elements that you need to uh, be focused on is about writing a systematic proof of novelty and significant contribution. That This element must be there. Systematic proof and significant contribution. Your, the, this, there must also be an element of uh, critical discussion okay, on the progress in the related area within the introduction. And the introduction must end with highlights on how you approach the project and about the novelty of the work. You must spell out clearly what is actually the novelty of your work uh, at the end of the introduction. Okay, so you, Remember these three key elements when writing your introduction. Okay, so the introduction of a Q1 article presents an in-depth review of literature. Okay, an in-depth review of literature. So it must be critical, it must be objective, it must be uh, uh, the, uh, the, literature, the, the literature that you select must be relevant to the topic. Okay, do not take literature that is uh, out of topic. So why in-depth literature review is required? Because you need to establish the importance of the subject matter okay, in the advancement of technology and knowledge. Secondly, to create familiarity with the fundamentals, progress, and current thinking of a particular topic. 
And then the introduction or the, the literature study is also needed to critically analyze a segment of published knowledge, which is basically to summarize, to compare, to classify the arguments. And then uh, also why we need in-depth literature, because we need to justify the project, approach, the domain and the country vision. So this is a very, very tedious work in terms of preparing a very good introduction. There's a number of introduction levels. Okay, basically, there I, I can uh, separate into first level objectives, the basic objectives, as well as advanced objectives. So for PhD and master's work, you need to cover both levels of objectives. For degree projects, they, they usually cover just the basics objective. So when you are writing in your introduction, make sure you cover every single objective that is outlined here. Okay. And this, uh, this objective are actually cyclic. So the components of an introduction, okay, you, you can plan the storyline using the fundamental from the general, general aspects to more detailed aspects. It usually covers the background area of study. And then it will go directly into the research trend in the related areas. And then uh, the next stage is about identifying the problem, the research gap, as well as its significance. Here, you must uh, evaluate systematically a genuine problem and gap based on whatever literature that you can find. And wisely, okay, wisely argue the significance of your research. And so you must also propose the in the next step, your proposed solution must ensure that the correct scientific and mathematical formulations are referred. Okay, do not apply a solution or mention a solution that is not scientifically or mathematically true. And then you must also position your solution or your work to technology and knowledge advancement. Maybe you can say that your work, your solution is uh, something that can be applied okay, in 5 to 10 years time. And then you must also clarify the project, project flow. So this is the components that needs to be there in the intro. So you can use this as a guideline in terms of writing your introduction. And then you need to plan the storyline based on your title. So this is how it is done. This is the title of my student's uh, work. Okay. And she planned the introduction section for her, for her paper based on the elements within the title. Okay, first of all, start with the uh, subject matter and then go into the uh, scientific discipline, the scientific area of the work, which is basically a bit, uh, from here. It is called the thermal management. And then uh, after that, only you go to the uh, solution or the problems that you want to address. And then finally, the conclusion. Okay, so in terms of uh, you can uh, outline uh, the introduction section based on this aspect, the sto uh, uh, structured story. Okay, so here you can see examples of how to write, okay, how to write critical statements, identification of limits, info on concept and technologies, the hist how to write historical aspects, okay, progress in the area, identification of in gaps uh, knowledge in uh, gap in knowledge okay so there's so many ways to write but what I, what I'm trying to say here is about how that uh, you, you must plan what elements that you want to write in your introduction plan very carefully okay so uh, because of time constraint uh, you I uh, hope that you can take a look at all of these slides and and, then, and see how uh, my students and myself write about the introduction and how about why it is being written. Okay, the elements uh, that are inherent within the introduction section. So one important part uh, in the literature on the introduction is to provide critical assessments that leads to research gaps. This is more important when, if you are doing your PhD study. So please take a look about uh, all, all the slides that I have presented here, about the quality of figures, uh, the quality of in terms of presenting tables. Okay, uh, so here 
it is about writing the methodology. Usually, when you when we do our project, it can be categorized as a design project or modeling work or procedures or performing uncertainty analysis. So, how to write? when uh, it involves all these uh, aspects of methodology. So this is a few suggestions uh, where if you have your work involves design, so you need to explain in detail the root sciences and maths. You must provide specs for everything. You must be crystal clear, crystal clear about your presentation. Meaning if you provide a CAD model, uh, the drawing must be attractive, must be uh, clear okay, to the audience. Okay. You must also explain the, the system. Okay. Explain the concept of the system, provide tables, provide uh, spec specifications for everything, the components as well as the properties of the substance that you use. And you must also uh, wisely use diagrams to provide visual support to the explanations within, within the text. Okay, when you are detailing the procedure of your work, please uh, avoid confusion okay, because the, make sure the readers do not uh, can easily understand. Okay, the readers can easily understand how you perform your work in terms of experiment or in terms of modeling or, and everything. Okay, refer articles and standards to justify and strengthen uh, the approach of your work. So you need to, uh, this is a very good a way of making sure that the uh, the reviewers are very clear that you are very tedious in terms of your uh, work quality. Okay, so please take a look on how I presented my work. Uh, everything that I have presented here is actually based on my own Q1 publications. Okay, this is not something that I have taken out from other work. Okay, this is all based on my own work. Okay, one aspect, if you are do it, dealing with experimental work, ensure that you put in as well uncertainty analysis because this is actually compulsory, okay? compulsory or an added value for your papers. Okay. And in terms of uh, these are other tips for methodology, make sure you label your diagrams uh, correctly. Okay. You can also use uh, schematic, uh, you can also provide schematic of the system combined with the actual picture of the system. So this will allow the reader to have a greater understanding as well as appreciation on the technical level, the difficulty of the technical work of your, uh, of your work, okay? the technical level of your work. Okay? Uh, you can use uh, creative methods to improve the understanding of the methodology. Okay? So if your work involves modeling, so normally Q1 papers love detailed mathematics and science. You can use the right way and you must fit the solution approach. So this is an example from my own papers where I provided a very comprehensive mathematical detail on the sciences that I'm going to apply for the, uh, for the analysis. Um, so mathematics are usually used to establish an objective and common understanding of a specific phenomena. phenomena. Mathematics also details the influence of unique parameters and it leads towards better control and manipulation. So a mathematical model also explains the truth behind scientific statements under control or occurrences. So basically, a mathematical model can be is, is a, actually a tool okay, to explain things and how to do things right. So you need to find and use the right tool. Okay, a paper with comprehensive mathematical modeling is the easiest approach to high impact general publication. However, all models need to be validated. Okay, failure to validate your model would lead to outright rejection. Okay, so all the models will be validated. Yeah, here are some examples on how I presented my own analytical models as well as a numerical model. So this is the only slide. Okay, this is the only slide in my presentation that is based on the uh, not my work okay, from uh, from the work from uh, of my colleague uh, where he presented a numerical analysis a CFD computational work. So if you are presenting a numerical modeling, make sure you have the elements of design details, the justification of solvable models. You also need to present your governing equations, your system specs, 
your mesh details, your system model, uh, your mesh model, the convergence criteria, the initial and boundary conditions with justification, as well as the validation of the data or, or, or the result. Now also you must make sure that in the numerical study, you also provide variation in case studies, you choose the best parametric profiling technique, you explain your, your result scientifically, and uh, you also profile your important result. So it's quite tedious actually in, uh, if you want to uh, publish a work in terms of numerical modeling aspect. Make sure all the, all the mentioned aspects, elements are there when you are writing something that consists of numerical modeling. All right, so finally about the outlook of your results. Okay, make sure you follow the normal or standard approach of analysis for a specific year of study. Uh, in brief, you need to section your results systematically and to build, so that you can build the argument for the targeted outcome. So first of all, plan. Okay, plan a story, storyline. Okay, so all of this, uh, you need to be very clear, having uh, professional graph that is self-explanatory. Apply standard or accepted ways of analysis, meaning you can follow uh, the presentation of results from highly cited papers. Make sure you have a, you have a journal, a high impact journal publication that you follow. You okay, find one or two that you tediously or uh, systematically follow in terms of result presentation. Okay, ensure data aggregation is appropriate. Okay, properly explain data that shows deviations. Okay, discuss the most important anchor parameter in detail, and you must relate your analysis based to uh, relate to funda fundamentals. Okay, do not just mention physically the result trend. Okay, it goes down, it goes up. Uh, the maximum value is this, the minimum value is that. That is not proper for a high quality, uh, high impact journal publication. You must relate all your result to scientific as well as mathematical fundamentals. Okay, establish, you can also establish sub analysis for to strengthen your uh, result. You can use equations as well as references in the proper manner to explain your findings. This is especially true for engineering papers. Use, use the equations that you apply to compute or to come up with your result to explain the trend of the result. Okay, for conclusion aspect, the Q1 journals normally require a critical and comprehensive summary of the work done where the conclusion aims to relate all the information within the work and the, to close the work properly as well as to open new opportunities or possibilities from your findings. So make sure you write about new opportunities or new possibilities uh, at the end of your conclusion. Okay, so uh, please uh, go through about these uh, references and styling. We are out of time, so I hope that you will go through the slides uh, in detail. Uh, if you have questions, any sort of uh, uh, whatever problems or whatever question that you have about writing, uh, even your proposal or even your thesis, okay, you can write to me or uh, contact me through WhatsApp. So inshallah, I will be able, I will be glad to help you in terms of uh, whatever problem that you have in terms of writing. So please plan your research so that it meets the Q1 criteria. So no, normally failure to, to publish in high impact journal publication is normally related to failure to properly plan your research up to that level. So make sure your work has novelty and your work has been planned systematically from the first semester. That is the key. Okay. The key to a successful publication in Q1 journals. Okay. Please, before you submit, proofread for story for storyline, proofread for language before submission, because bad English will definitely lead to rejection. Okay. So this is my sister, Dr. Wan Nazia, that I can recommend for proofreading. She is a lecturer in UITM, Machang. She can help you to uh, uh, improve your English as well as your pra present presentation as well. And uh, if your papers are rejected or if your supervisors uh, comment very tediously on your work, please accept that rejection with uh, humility. 
because it is a lesson in academic excellence. Use the comments as leverage for greater quality. Repair and resubmit as soon as possible. This is something that I go through every single year. Okay, because even though I'm uh, experienced in terms of publishing high impact journals, even my new manuscripts are rejected. Okay, so please uh, make sure that everything uh, that you write is uh, of high quality and accept whatever rejection or comments with humility. And make sure you adhere to ethics. Okay? Do not publish fabricated information because in our line of work, academics, it is about finding the truth. Okay? Finding the truth. So we need to uh, be very, very ethical in our work. And of course, uh, you must uh, also protect your authorship. Okay? Do not uh, accept people who wants to include their names in your papers. Okay, so make sure this uh, sa the sanctity of authorship is being uh, is being protected. Okay, do not allow yourself to be part of a party that uh, is lying to the whole world. So make sure uh, you you are very ethical in this aspect, the aspect of authorship. Right, so. Remember that if you want to have uh, to achieve greatness in terms of your work, okay, it is it can only be achieved if you do it right. Whatever good thing that you plan must be done in the right manner so that it can become great. Okay, so I believe that all of us can write a high impact journal publication. Okay, it just says, it is just about whether you want it or not. It is tough, but it is not impossible and it is actually an obligation especially for phd students you might you need to dissipate your valuable knowledge uh, to the world so that you will be able okay, all of us will be able to live okay, beyond our beyond our time okay? your name will be remembered okay, due, due to the contribution in knowledge Okay, so plan your work in detail and form or be part of a team. Do not uh, accept ideas in your team. And of course, again, never confuse luck with skill. That's the end of the uh, presentation in term for this uh, scientific journal. Okay, so whatever inquiries, please contact. Do not hesitate to contact me. Okay, I will be ready to assist you in any way. Okay, so inshallah, I hope that every one of you will be able to publish, especially in high impact journal publication. It is, yes, it is tough, but it's not impossible. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.